It's the Thursday Morning House Call with Dr. Lane Aina. Brought to you by Huntsville Memorial Hospital. Good morning. Big Glenn here with you in studio with me is Dr. Lane Aina. Good morning, Dr. Lane. Good morning. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty well. The weather's nice today. Weather's going to be nice this weekend. Maybe I can finally get that jungle of a yard of mine mode. Uh, I need a, a combination of nice weather and not rain for long enough to not have standing water, which I think a lot of people listening are in the same boat. Pretty no, much. No pun intended in the same boat. So <laughs> Yeah, I just caught that. Anyway, so for the topic today, we've never talked about it, and quite honestly, it's becoming a big deal across the country. So, yeah, if you're watching the news and you keep up, you're hearing a lot in the past few weeks about bird flu. So I wanted to talk about that, dispel some myths, maybe calm some nerves out there. You know, it, this has always been a show about knowledge, and let's teach everybody what it is. So what is bird flu? It's H5N1 is the strain. That's the naming that they use for the strains of the flu that you'll hear. No matter the flu is that kind of naming style. Initially, it was in wild birds, spread through bird saliva, bird feces. We started to detect it in chickens, so so that bird livestock, if you will. So once it got to the chickens, that was worrisome. We don't want it in our stock. But why is it in the news now? That's not really news, right? Oh, chickens are getting sick. Chickens get sick, right? I have any farmer on the show. They'll say, yeah, chickens get sick. So, well, it spread to cows and that has been concerning because cows, much like us, are mammals. So it mutate to go from bird to mammal. It had to have mutated. Now, the mutating of viruses is no stranger to anybody after COVID, right? Now we are all experts on virus mutation and how it happens. The worry is if it can mutate to spread to cows? Is it mutating now to where it can spread to humans? And what is the danger to humans? Right now, the answer is no. There's been, I think, three total cases. It's been very, very rare. It's much more of a concern for dairy farmers. You will see it in sick and dying cows, and it's becoming a concern because it's spreading so well amongst dairy cattle. So while I want to downplay the risk for the general population, I certainly don't want to downplay the struggle that our dairy farmers are going through. This is a scary time for their cow, their livestock, their life right? So dead and dying animals tend to be the ones that have this. So if you're around a dead or a dying animal, which is just good advice in general is to mask up, put gloves on, put a gown on, put booties on your shoes. You don't know what has it so sick and you don't want to catch that. Now, if you think back to, gosh, what was it? 2010 with swine flu, 2008. When was that? It was a while ago. Everyone rebelled against pork. Nobody wanted to eat sausage or bacon anymore. And, and pork farmers were so upset. And they asked that we rename it, not swine flu, you know, call it something else. So what is the danger now? Is it in eggs? Is it in chicken? Is it in milk? Is it in beef? No. Right now, anything you buy at the store is safe. There's ongoing studies and, and none of them, and I mean none of them, have found any evidence that there's any danger in buying your food at the store, just like you always do, and cooking your food thoroughly. And again, not cooking your food thoroughly leads to a host of other issues. Don't undercook your chicken, think bird flu. Think lots and lots of other things you're going to get, like E. coli, salmonella, right? If you look at milk specifically, Specifically, it can spread through unpasteurized milk, and you will see some things on social media about start drinking unpasteurized milk to try to build an immunity. Folks, don't do that. Unpasteurized milk comes with a host, a host of other risks. So don't do that. Drink your milk pasteurized. It really makes it safe. What is the danger looking for? Because we always think about COVID. We're all so shell-shocked from all of that. The worry is, like we'd mentioned earlier in the show, could this jump to humans? It could. But with this being a flu virus, it could be dangerous, right? It could be dangerous, but we should be able to ramp up a response much more quickly. We have experience with the flu. We have experience with the flu vaccine. The flu medicine we have, Tamiflu, is effective against it, which is wonderful. So we've already got a, a medicine. So really, I wanted to kind of dispel some myths today. Make sure calm people down. Remember, a lot of people are selling clicks. They want your viewership. So they're going to try to write the most outrageous headline possible to get you to jump on. But at the time, just keep our dairy farmers in mind and, and think about them. Make sure you're keeping yourself safe other ways. It's always a good idea to stay home if, if you're sick. It's always good to use protective of equipment if you're around sick and dying animals and just keep a listen to the news with a level head and this show and we will be sure to keep you up to date on the latest news and what's going on out there all right fantastic some really great information from dr lane Aina. and before we do anything else i need to say this to you happy anniversary it was last week 10 years happy anniversary thank you happy anniversary to my wonderful wife missy it's been 10 wonderful years and four wonderful children later and, and it's the absolute happiest day of my life 10 years ago and love her more every day there you go so again good information from Dr. Lane Aina, and that's this week's edition of Thursday Morning House Call brought to you by Huntsville Memorial Hospital. Let's keep Huntsville healthy.